Hi, I'm Bill Bronchick, and in this video, I'd like to explore with you the myth that there's no deals in my market. I've been hearing from people all over the country telling me the story that they think their market is unique and that there's nothing on the MLS, everybody's bidding over properties, there's nothing for sale, I can't find any deals. Wake up, it's the same everywhere. Almost every market in the country has the same problem. No inventory on the MLS. So instead of going and looking in other markets or looking for other strategies or looking for other top types of opportunities to make money, let me share with you seven ways that you can find deals in your market guaranteed. Now the first one is the one you're complaining about, the MLS. Now, I'll admit that you can't make a living trying to find deals just on the MLS. There's just not enough deals, okay? But if you're going to look for deals on the MLS, here's how you shouldn't do it. So a listing on a property worth $200,000 comes out on a Thursday morning and the bank is asking 135. So you go, oh boy, that looks like a potential deal. And you go drive by it and then you look at it with your realtor and then you assess all the numbers and then the next day you go out and make an offer on the property for 135, their full asking price and guess what? They laugh at you. The listing agent already has 27 offers and they've bid it all up to 175. What's wrong? Well, the problem is, is that there's just not enough properties and people are overbidding those. Don't even try to play that game. You will lose. The way to work the MLS is to look for properties that have been sitting around at least a month, maybe even two months. And that way, first of all, you don't have people bidding on it and, 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 and fighting over the property. You have plenty of time to go look at it and look for the problem that's spooking everybody that may not really be that big of a problem. So if the listing says, this was a meth lab, most people are gonna go, ooh, meth lab. That's not a big problem. You go in, you remediate the house, you tear it down to the studs, and in most states, you don't even have to disclose it if you remediate it properly. Check with your state law on that, of course, but it could have been a minor meth lab as opposed to a major meth lab. Or if it says foundation issue, is it a minor one or is it a major one? Or there's mold, minor mold, and there's major mold. So look for the properties that everyone's been kind of spooked away from, that kind of fell through the cracks, have been sitting around a while, and focus on those properties instead of fighting over the ones that everybody else wants, which is the super cheap bank-owned property that they're teasing you with a low initial offering bid. Now, the second way, and more fruitful way, is to look at FISBOs. I know you're going to tell me, I went and looked on Craigslist, or I called some FISBOs, and they're crazy, they want too much money, they're not realistic. Of course they're all morons, we know that. We know they're unrealistic, we know they're asking too much. Most people who are for sale by owner are doing so because they want top dollar, or they think they're smarter than a real estate broker, or they owe too much. That's okay. Now I'm not saying call for sale by owner properties. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is flush them out. Mailers. Mail to people. Out of state owners. Uh, absentee owners. Uh, people who uh, just inherited properties, which we're going to get to in a, in a little bit. So flush out the for sale by owners and get them to call you rather than the other way around. Okay? Now, another sort of sister to FISBOs is FURBOs. What are FURBOs? For rent by owner. Where else would you find a rental property if you were looking for one than from another landlord? Why would you call a for sale by owner when you can call a for rent by owner? Now, if someone's advertising a property for rent, let's say on Craigslist or some website, we know one thing for sure. The property's vacant, and they may have had a tenant problem. Or they may not want to be a landlord anymore. Maybe they want, they're old and they want to retire. Or maybe they're renting it because they couldn't sell it. Um, you could look for ads that say for sale or rent or an out-of-state phone number. So furbos can be a great source, uh, sort of a hidden gem in there that people don't look for. They look for for sale by owners, not necessarily for rent by owners. Or if you see a sign in your neighborhood that says house for rent, call them up. Say, I'm a landlord too. Any interest in selling? You never know, the guy might be 79 years old and have 11 properties and he wants to sell them all to you, own or carry, with a reasonable down payment. He could strike it rich. You don't know. So start calling for rent by owners. 
Number four, and I hinted at this before, is probates. Now, probates are people um, who have died, and there's two ways to handle probates. One is, in the process of probate, dealing with the executor or executrix, you know, generically called the personal representative of the estate, and the way you find those properties is they put a notice in the newspaper. In the legal newspaper, they're obliged to put a notice that says, notice to creditors, that's how the headline reads, anyone who has a claim against the estate of Jim Johnson, please contact the undersigned representative at the following address, and sometimes there's even a telephone number. Mail to those people. Maybe you can strike a deal with them. Or you can buy lists of people who already inherited the property. That means it's already through the probate process. So their inherited property is not necessarily probates. Now, they can be easier to deal with because the pain may have gone away. It's later in the process. You don't have to deal with the estate. They've already gone through the estate. Technically, they're not really probates. They're inherited properties, but you know, just as good opportunities. Number five, foreclosures. Now, this is a very competitive one, too, like the MLS. And there's really only one way to work the foreclosure market, and that's to go knock on doors. Now, don't be afraid. No one's going to bite your head off or shoot you or sick their dog on you. All you do, do is knock on the door, and, and usually if, you, if, you, if you're nice, if you're sympathetic, if you listen to their problem, have a cup of coffee with them, you know, they'll tell you their problems. Most people don't do that. Most people mail. They don't have the guts to knock on doors. So go door knocking. You know, it's a lot of fun. It, it takes a little practice to get good at it. And, and don't force your way into the house and get them to sign a deed. That's not the point of the door knocking. The door knocking is just to introduce yourself and then make an appointment at a future time that you could sit down and you give them a list of items to gather up so you could sit down and have a fruitful conversation. And maybe later at that meeting, put it under contract to buy. Number six, the internet. Now, there's two ways on the internet to do it. One is to, did I spell that right? Internet. I did spell it right. Um, you could look on websites like, uh, like ForSaleByOwner.com or Craigslist. There's literally dozens of websites like it. Zillow, Trulia, et cetera. People advertise for sale by owner or for rent by owner. So you can look at those websites and call those people. Or you can set it up so when people search, you know, I need help for foreclosure or uh, I want to sell my house quickly, and then you have a website that catches those people. Now that's a long conversation of how to get into that search engine optimization where when they search, they find you quickly on the first page of Google. I'm not going to get into that. It's a very expensive, very complex discussion. but. You know, there are ways to do that. If you can take the time to learn search engine optimization or SEO, there are ways that people can search and find you on the internet if you do it properly. But mostly you're gonna be looking at websites like Craigslist and so forth where you search for people and then um, you call them. And don't overlook, by the way, Craigslist has a commercial section where they have um, apartments, car washes, businesses, industrial warehouses, uh, et cetera, et cetera, where you might find deals there too. Most people don't even know that exists. Okay? And then the most important thing, which is number seven, is referrals. You will get more deals from people who refer motivated sellers to you than any other type of deal. It's one thing when you call someone cold, but it's another thing totally different experience when you call someone and said, hey, Bob told me you had a problem that I could help you with. So um, ask people that are not necessarily in real estate, but in other businesses that might have motivated sellers. For example, your insurance agent. People make insurance claims. Um, process servers. They serve divorces, evictions, and things like that. Um, handymen. People who clean carpets. They might know landlords who had a bad experience. So people who are in affiliated businesses that you might know around real estate that can refer you motivated sellers. So I don't want to hear any bitching and whining anymore about how there's no deals in my market if all you're doing is trying to bid on those properties we talked about on the MLS. There's plenty of deals in your backyard. You just have to go out and look for them. They're not going to jump in your lap. So don't be lazy. Go out and hustle, and you'll find there's all the deals that you'll ever need. This is Bill Brownchick. I hope you've enjoyed this video.